Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on PM Modi attends Vastal Day Parade as guest of honor. India launches rocket to land spacecraft on moon south pole. And IMF says Pakistan needs steadfast policy implementation. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was given one of France's most spectacular recognitions on Friday as the guest of honour at the Basel Day Military Parade, part of a visit that has sealed high-profile defence deals. PM Modi and President Emmanuel Macron witnessed French and Indian soldiers march, while French-made Rafale fighter jets that India bought in 2015 also took part in the flypast. The parade comes as New Delhi gave initial approval to purchase an extra 26 Rafale jets for its Navy and three Scorpion-class submarines, deepening defence ties at a time the two nations are seeking allies in the Indo-Pacific. France has been one of India's closest partners in Europe for decades. Later in the day, Macron was scheduled to host PM Modi for a talk before a state banquet. Both India and France through their island territories have deep interest in the Indian Ocean and are concerned about China's growing assertiveness in the region. The Indian Space Research Organization ISRO successfully launched its lunar exploration mission Chandrayaan-3 on Friday from Andhra Pradesh state that will attempt to land a spacecraft at the lunar south pole. The mission is largely a do-over after the country's first attempt at putting a robotic spacecraft on the surface of the moon three years ago ended in a crash and a crater. The Chandrayaan-3 mission is designed to deploy a lander and rover near the moon's south pole around August 23. If ISRO pulls this mission off successfully, India will join an exclusive list of countries including the US, Russia and China that have managed a soft landing on the moon. Secretary General of the Muslim World League Mohammed bin Abdul Karim Al Issa on Thursday slammed terror outfits and said that they operate on distorting the image of religions while asserting that Islam and terrorism have nothing to do with each other. Al Issa, who is on a visit to India, said his organization was working on uprooting extremist ideologies from existence. During his visit, he met Indian leadership, including PM Modi and NSA Ajit Doval and discussed ways to promote interfaith dialogue and deepening partnership between India and Saudi Arabia. Alissa, who is considered one of the strongest voices on moderate Islam from Saudi Arabia, said his country's relationship with India has grown stronger in recent times. He said that India is a great model of coexistence to the entire world. طبعا هذه الحركات والتنظيمات هي حركات إرهابية لا تمثل إلا نفسها ودوما نقول بأن التطرف والإرهاب لا دين له ولا وطن له إنما يمثل أديولوجيته الإرهابية المتطرفة The IMF has said that the three billion dollar bailout to Pakistan is aimed at immediate efforts and steadfast policy implementation which will provide Pakistan enough time to implement the necessary policies for sustainability. A report. The International Monetary Fund, IMF's communication director, Julie Kozak, said on Thursday that its $3 billion bailout to stabilize Pakistan's economy was aimed at immediate efforts and critical steadfast policy implementation. Finance Minister Ishaq Dar on Thursday said that the country's central bank has received $1.2 billion from the IMF as the first tranche of the bailout. Having been teetering on brink of a sovereign debt default, Pakistan earlier this week also received $1 billion from the UAE and $2 billion from Saudi Arabia. The new um, program will anchor the authorities' immediate efforts to stabilize the economy with due protection for the most vulnerable and also provide a framework for financing from multilateral and bilateral partners to support 
uh, Pakistan's, uh, the Pakistan government's policies. Pakistan's annual consumer inflation has remained elevated at 29.4%. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government, which is due to face a national election later this year, has to undertake more painful fiscal discipline measures to satisfy the IMF. Pakistanis, however, say they are shattered and have no hope of any economic recovery soon. Taliban's Deputy Minister of Public Work, Din Mohammad Hagbin, has claimed that 95% of the population of Afghanistan do not want women to work in the society. Tolo News quoted Hagbin saying that 5% of the people who are making statements about working are trained by the foreigners as he stressed that other countries should not interfere in this regard. Meanwhile, US Special Envoy for Afghanistan Thomas West urged that women and girls in Afghanistan should have complete access to education as he said Afghan women are tremendous asset to the future of the country. Since seizing power in 2021, the Taliban has banned higher education for girls and prohibited women from working for aid agencies. The group claims it respects women's rights in accordance with its interpretation of Islamic law. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikrame Singh on Thursday stressed the importance of financial discipline and announced plans to promptly introduce formal measures to control public expenditure. Vikrame Singhe made the remarks during the presentation of a report by Finance Ministry officials which aims to propose strategies for generating new source of income. The island nation plunged into crisis last year as its foreign exchange reserves ran out and food and energy prices spiralled. But the situation is improving, officials say, after the government negotiated a $2.9 billion IMF bailout in March. Sri Lanka's key inflation index peaked at 70% last September. It was 12% in June. Despite an interim order by Nepal's Supreme Court to register same-sex marriage, the Kathmandu District Court has rejected the application of a gay couple. The Himalayan Times reported Maya Gurang and Surend Pandey, both born male, had filed applications seeking the court's approval to register their marriage. However, the district court on Thursday rejected it on the grounds that both the applicants are of the same gender. In 2007, Nepal's Apex Court had put in place measures to guarantee equal rights for the members of the LGBT community. Since then, some same-sex couples have held unofficial weddings and gay pride parades. But activists say there is still no clear legislation and people often face discrimination. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.